Good evening, everybody. All right, uh, we've got the great pleasure of having Chris Verhey back with us tonight. Uh, get a lot of requests for people wanting to trade uh, weekly options, so that's what uh, Chris is going to kind of uh, work on tonight. Chris is pretty well known. He's uh, uh, around the nation. Um, he's written over 100 weekly uh, columns for OptionInvestor.com. He's usually uh, doing seminars and workshops for Invest Tools, and he's been a frequent speaker at the uh, investor conferences and money shows around the nation. So with that, uh, we're anxious to see your information tonight, uh, Chris, on the weekly options. Uh, welcome to the Candles Farm again. Stephen, uh, thank, thank you for having me. I always enjoy being with your group. Um, you know, you, you've, got, you've got good students, and, and, um, and I know there's students of varying levels here. We, we've got some uh, newer traders, and, you've, and by all means, you've got guys trading for a living. So I promise everybody, you're gonna, everybody gets to learn something today. If you're a newbie, I'll try not to uh, connect you to the fire hose. And um, if you're an advanced trader, I, I promise you, we'll have to go through some, maybe a little bit of newbie stuff, but I, I, I promise you, everybody gets to learn something today. So again, Stephen, thanks for having me. And, and to all the candlestick uh, people out there, thanks for spending your evening with me. Again, my name is Chris Furhey. I, I write a weekly newsletter on trading weekly options. And um, we're going to speak about trading weekly options today. I've entitled this presentation, Using Math to generate fantastic short-term trading profits. Now, um, you're going to be the judge if it's fantastic, and you're going to be the judge if it's short-term. I'm, I'm biased. I think they're both. So having said that, it's pretty simple. I'm going to teach you how to make money, and, and that's as simple as buying low, selling high. And um, I don't want to sound disingenuous, but that, that's really what it is. I'm not buying options to exercise them. I'm not buying options as part of spreads or whatnot, I am simply buying options, hopefully very inexpensive, and, and selling for more than I pay for them. But having said that, we, we've got to have a disclaimer here. I, I am going to talk about real-world stocks. I'm not going to use hypothetical examples of stock XYZ or ABC or anything like that. And so all the securities used in this presentation are for educational purposes and are not to be construed as a recommendation to buy, sell, trade any of these securities. All right now, I got to share one thing with you. Um, I I trade options, and as an options trader, I, I just generally hate stocks. To me, stocks are a necessary evil. They're 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 the component. What I buy an option to buy or sell stock, but I try not to trade stock myself. And truly, the only way to make money on stocks is to buy low, sell high with the possible exception of a dividend, but stocks don't pay that much dividends anymore. So I like options because they're multi-dimensional. Now, more so than the multi-dimensional aspect of options, I believe the reasons to trade options is how much you use. Right? It's not anywhere near as capital intensive as trading stock. And in my opinion, it's nowhere near as risky. Now, I'm going to share some examples here where I'm going to put on a trade that I will risk 100%. But I'm risking 100% of a $20 bill, right? Not 10% of $1,000. So it's a, it's a point of perspective. Now, historically, people traded options as leveraged directional plays, right? And one of the things I, I love about uh, speaking to Stephen's um, students is that so many of you you know, see a stock going up, right, or see a stock going down, and you're prepared to trade it that direction. Now, historically, many of you that might trade options um, might buy an option instead of buying the stock, right? And, and what I'm going to tell you is we're going to buy the option for the sake of the option, right? And this is where I, um, the more advanced traders might say, okay, tell me something I don't already know. But the newbies, you got you got to learn how this works from the beginning. So I'll try and say this fairly quickly, but I'll say it in a way hopefully that everybody understands it fairly quickly. There are two types of options. There are call options and put options. 
Call options give their buyer the right to buy a stock at a set price for a set period of time without the obligation to do so. And since you're buying the right to buy a stock, your premise is that the stock is going up in price. Right? And I, I know statistics very well, and I, may, I consider myself a very good writer, and I've used the word bet here. It says bet a stock is going up in price. I'm not gambling, right? It's just bet is a very short word that paints a picture, and I could put it on this slide, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. Again, I am not gambling. I'm just looking for statistical edges. I'm looking for advantages. Again, if I think a stock's going up, I would buy a call option to profit by it going up. If I think a stock is going down, I would buy a put option. A put option gives the buyer the right to sell a stock at a set price for a set period of time without the obligation to do so. Right? The set price is officially known as the strike price. The set period of time is known as expiration. Now, for decades, I traded options that had just monthly expirations. That, that was There was 12 expirations a year. Now we have weekly options. We have expirations every week, 52 expirations a year, and that's what I'm going to focus on. Now, and when I say focus, I, I want to sort of laser drive um, my point of emphasis in that there's probably 10, 12,000 stocks out there, right? If we think, a, if we think a stock's going down, we buy a put option as a bet that the stock is going down. Someone can also buy a put option as insurance in case the stock is going down, right? If you own a stock, you're afraid it's going to go down, you can buy a put, right? And, and, and as I started to say, and I was probably one slide off, uh, there's 10, 12,000 stocks out there. About three or 4,000 of them have options. Probably four or 500 of them have weekly options. If a stock does not have an option, I don't care about it. I just ignore it. It's not my goal, not my bucket list to trade every stock in existence. It's my plan to make money. Right? And just on a side, I just happen to look, check my account. I am up 75% year to date on my my account. Right? 75%. I've three quarters of the way of doubling my entire account. And one of the ways I do that is by trading very little bits of money, and I like to make doubles. Right? And the way I do it is I start with a large universe of stocks, and I whittle that list down. Right? If it doesn't have options, I don't care about it. For that matter, if it doesn't have weekly options, I don't care about it. And then the stocks that do have weekly options, I don't care about most of those either. I focus on just a few. And my rejection system has become what I've created as the pulse system. Now, pulse is an acrostic. Acrostic. Acrostic is an acronym on steroids in that it spells something. And as such, it becomes a memory tool. Right? Because in addition to giving you know, trade recommendations or trades to consider, I like to teach my students. And one way, the best way to, that I believe is to learn is to have a memory crutch. And, and an acrostic is, is how I learned and so I find it a very good way for me to teach. Pulse, again, is an acrostic. P, profit potential. U, upside reward. L, low risk. S is setups and strategies. And E, events, entry, and exit, right? You gotta buy it, you gotta sell it. So, not only have I created the Pulse system, but I've written a book. I've um, produced a number of videos and I write a weekly newsletter. I'm going on, oh, I, think, I think next week it'll be five years that I've written a newsletter every week without fail. In the newsletter, I have a watch list. These are the dozens of stocks that make up my short list. From that watch list of dozens and dozens of stocks, I pick generally five, give or take. Right? This 
Last newsletter, we had four. I make a pick for the next week, right? The, to me, the beauty is I, I, I read this really elegant guy's newsletter, and he, and he made the case for this one stock, and he gave a reason why in the next three to five years it's going to go up in value. Guess what? You've got to wait three to five years to see if he's right. You know, sometimes you don't even have to wait three days to see if I'm right. And, and again, I, I say the emperor has no clothes. When I make a pick one week, we're going to review my picks the very next week, and I'm constantly trying to educate. Right? Again, all system is an acrostic. To me, that's a, a memory crutch, a memory tool to help you to internalize the information. So let's, let's look at the pulse system. P, profit potential. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, some of my examples are from a while ago. Not all my examples are from a while ago. And when you look and you see, if you see an example, in this case, this one's two years old, you say, oh, oh great, you know, what's he done for us lately? My point, I've written this newsletter, again, in a, in a week or two, it'll be five years. The math has not changed, right? The number of stocks available have changed because five years ago when I started, there were only 24 companies that had weekly options. Again, now we have hundreds and hundreds of them. Not all of them are worth trading. But the math has not changed. The math that makes this Amazon calls, some of which gained over $10,000, or excuse me, 10,000% in a single day. And I'll give you an example of that since I've learned how to use Got an option down here, opened, right? Opened at a cents, hit a five high of five dollars and five cents. There's 100 shares per option contract, so this contract here went from four dollars, right? Just four dollars up to five hundred and five dollars. Right? That is a big gain. That's the potential we're talking about. here. Right? That was Amazon call options. That's a week back in June where Amazon went up in price. The very next week, Amazon went down in price. And when Amazon goes up, the calls go up in price. When Amazon went down, the puts went up price. P, profit potential. Now, here are a couple of charts. These are intraday charts. These are candle This is a candlestick chart. And you can see that this option went from $0.08 cents to $1.90 in just a matter of hours. Here's a, an example. An option opened at $0.02, cents, hit a high of $1.50. Let me point this out to you. Again, I've just learned how to use this pen. It opened at $0.02, cents, it hit a high of $1.50. Right, so that's $2 became... One hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, again, one of the beauties, in my opinion, of trading options is the fact that you do not have to tie up much money. You don't have to risk much money. I, I know everybody on this call today has two dollars that they can risk. Right? So, again, lots of potential. Now. I'm not going to talk about my trades because I've been doing this a long time. It's better a better example, in my opinion, to talk about my students' trades, right? Because you're more likely, you know, if you decide to become my student, you're more likely to have an understanding of a student, right? Over time, you'll get an understanding like myself, but at the, at the beginning, it'll take you a little bit. Now, this particular student, this is a true story. I don't know if you guys ever saw the TV show Shark Tank. His family took a business on Shark Tank, and they sold it to one of the sharks. So I, I think I'm his second favorite person in the world. But he bought an option for $0.60, cents, which is $60 a contract. He bought 20 contracts. He put $1,200 in. Just a couple days later, he sold it for $7.30. He brought in a gain of $13,400. That was his gain. 
Now, is that typical? Probably not. You know, most of my students will probably invest less than $1,200. Again, this particular student over time built up his comfort level where he was willing to put $1,200 in. Now, this student has has traded FCX numerous times. FCX is Freeport McMoran. We have a we have a rule on Freeport McMoran about buying options that are under a dime. This screenshot is from November 7th, 2013. This shows a um, Freeport McMoran put option that went from four cents to 35 cents before closing at 30 cents. Right, four cents to 35 cents. Now, a couple of things I want to point out to you. Previous close, that's the close that before, four cents. Opening trade, four cents. When you start to learn our system, you'll see that our is such that you don't necessarily have to watch all day. We take a, make a lot of trades right near the close of the day. We make a lot of trades right near the open of the day. Again, you might say, hey, this thing's almost three years old. Well, guess what? That's November 7th of 2013. Here's a screenshot of November 7th, 2014. Here we had an option that closed one day at six cents, opened the next day at eight cents, made a high of 36 cents before closing at 32 cents. Again, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of percent overnight or intraday. Not a very long time. Now, the other, the other beauty, in my opinion, is that you can paper trade this. You can practice without risk because you can see the results in a very short period of time. Again, you don't have to wait weeks or months, and certainly don't have to wait years to see how well you did, you can see how you would have done in a very short period of time. A more current trade, right? This is an actual trade from a student. He bought 500 contracts of the FCX March 17 half calls for 15 cents. He sold them for 80 cents. He turned $7,500 into $40,000. That's a good trade. Now, is that typical? I, I don't think that's very typical because that's a you know, very large money. Another student, July 26, 2016, just a couple months ago. This is the FCX. He bought the $10.50 put, the $12 call, which is a strangle. That's a call and put on the same stock, same expiration, different strike prices. We have a rule, magic dime. We like to pay less than a dime right, for our options. He bought one at eight cents, bought one at nine cents. He sold the call for 74 cents, right? It doesn't matter what the put brings. Now, a, a number of people ask me, Chris, what is your success rate? And, and if I told you my success rate is 50%, you might say, oh, well, geez, I, he's a terrible trader. We, we want guys that are 80, 90% right. Well, think about this for a second. If I'm 50% right and I make, uh, I sell for 74 cents on one side that I paid nine, it's okay if the side I paid eight cents becomes worthless. Right? I see people asking, are these earnings trades? No, these are not earnings trades. I want to ask if, if this is about ver vertical or diagonal spreads. These are not spreads. These are straight, simple option trades. Again, this is an older screenshot. Great. This is an unedited quote from an email sent to me by a student about Chipotle Mexican Grill and the 3X bullish banking sector stock FAS. It says at 9.35 a.m. Eastern time. That's Everybody, that's five minutes after the open. We don't like to buy right at the open because we like the dust to settle a little bit. He bought 10 contracts of the Chipotle January week four, 500 puts for $1.95, right, which is 195 a contract. 10 contracts would be $1,950. He paid $15.35 in commission. I know that because I'm good at math. math. He bought 10 contracts of the FS, FAS puts for 35 cents, right? $35 a contract times 10 contracts, 350 bucks, plus $15.35 in commissions. He says, 
as the attached screenshot shows, I close out both transactions for a one-day net gain of $6,538.44. Fantastic. Now, again, the, the title of this presentation is Trading Weekly Options Using Math to Generate Fantastic Short-Term Trading Profits. Again, I will let you decide if $6,500 right, on a, a $2,300 and some odd dollar investment is fantastic or not. I'd like to think one day is short. And um, the beauty here, again, on the screenshot, if you look at the time he bought, bought these five and six minutes after the market opened, he sold them four minutes before the close. We often make our trades near the open and near the close, which allows a trader who can't watch the market all day to trade and make a fair amount of money. Is that typical? I think this is a more typical trade. Student sent me an email. Wanted to let you know I traded Salesforce.com today. It was on your list, right? He's referring to the list in my newsletter. If my math is correct, I realized 500% on this trade. It was virtual trading. Again, that's paper trading. Again, the beauty is you can learn without risking money, and you can see your results very fast. Now, I, I thought this was funny that he didn't even watch all my DVDs, yet he was able to implement some of the information. And to me, it's very typical, not because he's trading without watching all the DVDs, but it's typical because he's paper trading. We practice first without risking money. P-U-L-S-C, I've been showing you all the potential. Let's, and, and, and you might say, isn't potential the same as upside? Well, I've been showing you potential moves 500%, 1,000%, as high as 10,000%. I want you to know we look for a minimum of a double. That's a requirement. If, if we can't double, I don't like to trade it. We want them to be low risk. Right? Our FCX rule, if we call it our magic dime, we like to buy our options roughly around 10 cents. I do want to tell you that I trade more expensive options than that. I bought a Lowe's, L-O-W, call option on yesterday because Home Depot and Lowe's were both down, but Lowe's was down further. Low was low. And so I bought a call. I paid $1.10. And I sold it this morning for $1.47. Right? That's maybe not so low risk. That's maybe the extreme. But it still shows you that we don't tie up huge amounts of money. And I think if you do the math, that's 37% or 33%, somewhere right in there, call it 35% overnight. It's a pretty good trade. PUL is the math that tells you how to pull money from the market. I, it's, it's a proprietary uh, formula that I've written that I will give you. I don't, I don't hide it. It's not black box. It's not a secret. I share it with you. I put it into an Excel spreadsheet. I'm more than happy to email you a copy of my Excel spreadsheet so you can run all the, the math on all the stocks, and you will see that you know, if in my newsletter I do it for you. Um, P-U-L-S. S is setups. We have stock specific. We have market-wide setups. We have strategies. We have a directional strategy. Buy a straight call, expecting the stock to go up. Buy a straight put, expecting the stock to go down. Or non-directional strategies. Right? Non-directional is where we buy both the call and put. We don't necessarily know or care what direction the market moves. We just want it to move a fair amount. I understand I, I, I'm kind of going through this fast. I occasionally look at the questions, but I will promise you I will go back and answer the questions after my presentation. So S is setups and strategies. Our biggest strategy is the non-directional trade. There's two types. There's a straddle and a strangle. Both of them have a call and put on the same expiration, on the same stock, a straddle has uses the same strike prices, right? A straddle is a non-direction that the stock will move. Right? We have a rule. We only, only 
only, only, only buy straddles if the stock price is equal to or really, 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 really close. Right? The stock price is really close to a strike price. Right? Since the straddle uses the same strike price for the calls and puts, and I go into great detail on why the math makes that rule. And when a stock's not equal to a stock price, when a stock price is not equal to a strike price, we consider a strangle. This is a call and a put, a bet the stock's going up and a bet the stock's going down, which one contradicts the other. Right? We use the same expiration but different strike prices. They can be one strike price apart, they can be two, three, four. There's a set of rules for these. And the concept is it's a non-directional bet that a stock will make a breakout move. Right? A non-directional bet the stock will make a breakout move. Now we trade these on E, events. Now stock specific, most people think stock specific, they think earnings. I'm going to tell you something. We do not buy our options, we do not buy our options on a stock releasing its earnings before it releases its earnings. The market makers inflate the implied volatility. They make the options really expensive. We buy our options after the actual earnings. But a, earnings is a stock-specific event. A market-wide event might be the FOMC meeting. It might, might be a non-farm payroll report. Right? There are eight FOMC meetings a year. There are eight FOMC meetings minutes release each year. There's 12 NFP reports each year, right? we have a number of market-wide events that we trade. So here's an example. I read your newsletter and decided that triple witching Friday sounded too good to be on the sidelines. Here's an event. He had a fantastic two months of trading that could cover a year's worth of income. So on the Thursday before the close, again, right near the close, he made his results. Total net profit for four hours and 15 minutes $66,850. So again, if you're a larger account, even though we are using very inexpensive options, you still can make large sums of money. E, again, earnings is an event. And the biggest profits come after the release, right? After the release. E is also the entry and exit. And I've, I've shared this already we often look to buy at a specific time near the close of one day let's say prior to an event or near the open right but a couple minutes after the open because we like the bid ask spreads to kind of settle down or we will buy at a price an example of price if the stock is at a stock at a strike price we can buy a straddle now when we exit We'll either exit with a target order, right? We'll set a good till cancel limit order. Hey, if we buy an option for a dime and we're happy to get 50 cents for it, we'll hang an order for 50 cents, right? And we take our profit and run, or we may trail a stop. Right? Option goes high, higher in price. We keep raising our stop underneath it, and when the option eventually rolls over, we get out. The newsletter, right, takes PUL does the math on the stock's weekly options to give us a watch list. Of that watch list, there's going to be stocks that are going to have one setup or another. Either it's going to be an event or it might be a technical setup. And I talk about, you know, five of these, half dozen. Again, this last week it was four. And, and we write about them in detail, right? So, Again, this is not a newsletter coming up. This is the middle of October. Here's a newsletter from November. I wrote, if Tesla gaps up, I feel it has a reversal, the higher likelihood. If Tesla gaps down, I feel the trade will continue. Either way, both involve buying the puts. And if you're not sure, buy a put and a call. So here's a testimonial from a student. He says, Thursday, at 9.39, again, nine minutes after the open. That's our rule. He bought five contracts of the $143 strike price put on Tesla at $0.42. Cents, right? That's $42 a contract, five contracts, $210. He placed the order to sell. This is his target order. 
put it at a dollar fifty. He left. He was filled two minutes later. Now I was buying something for two hundred and ten dollars and selling it for seven hundred and fifty dollars. Is that a fantastic return? I'll let you decide. But I don't think you can argue that two minutes is short term. Different student. As a newer student of three or four months. Again, there's a little bit of a learning curve. This is not a light switch you just you plug in and turn on. But that's the beauty. You can paper trade over and over again. You get to the point where you're ready to risk your money and you don't have to risk a whole lot. This student bought one contract only. He bought the $149 put for $138 and he sold it for $600. He got more than four times his money. Here's the thing. Any system that you look at, any system that you look at that you consider trading, if it requires perfect execution, it's a system doomed to fail. My system works on sloppy slop. The gains are so big that we don't have to buy the low and we don't have to sell the high to make money. We can, we can pay too much and we can sell for too little. I use the example of these two Tesla trades, right? Here's, here's a picture of this option. It went from $0.42 cents to $1.50 in two minutes, and then the next day it, it went above $10. Right? He left a lot of money on the table. Again, Pulse System is a system. I wrote a book. I filmed a number of videos. I'd probably talk a little slower in my videos. Um, I've been writing this newsletter for, for a couple weeks shy of five years. I've written trading newsletters for, I want to say, decades. In the newsletter, I do the math, the PUL math. We pick the watch list, which is dozens and dozens of stocks. We pick the best half dozen, give or take. Right? We tell you why you might consider trading them. And then the next week, we review the previous week's pick. And all along, we're educating. So my goal is to teach you to exploit a setup, right? to teach you how to exploit a setup. And so one of the ways to do it is to teach you how to trade a stock. So Schlumberger, I don't know if any of you have ever traded Schlumberger before. The ticker is SLB. I've been trading Schlumberger for so long, and, and a number of us, we call ourselves slob traders, SL. We've added the O to the ticker symbol. So again, this slide is from a couple years ago. This shows a 1,300% move from one day to the next, 1,300%. Now, that's a fairly big move. What if you didn't get all of that? What if you got some of it? Guess what? You're going to do pretty good. Right? Here, here's a couple weeks later, from seven cents to seventy cents. And again, look in the box. I've got the previous close at seven cents and the open of seven cents highlighted. It went to seventy cents. Now you'll see that it closed at twenty cents, and that's why I like the trailing stop, right? Because you can keep ratcheting up and and harvest more of this. But hey, if if you were a terrible trader and you bought it at the close of one day and you sold it at the close of the next day. You bought it for seven, you sold it for 20. That's nothing to complain about. Albeit, I'm sure people complain. Uh, a week later, here's a 2,900% gain on a J option. Here's an email from a student. student. Thanks, Chris. I got in slob early in this morning and got out with a $1,000 profit in 15 minutes. Right, Real quick, $1,000 may or may not be fantastic to you, but I'd like to think 15 minutes is short term. I enjoy your service too much. It says, too bad I'm not a day trader. Thanks again. This brings up a point. A lot of the examples we use, I get in in the morning, I get out late in the day, and people say, hey, you need $25,000 to day trade. No, you need $25,000 to regularly day trade. If you make two day trades a week, you just continue week after week. And, and, and because some people are concerned about day trades, that's why we often look to the close of one day and get out the next day. In that instance, it's not a day trade. But let me tell you something. We are in trades for a very short period of time. 
Um, here's an overnight example, right? Um, this is a few months after. Opened, uh, closed one day at a quarter, opened the next day at 280. That's, that's 10 times your money overnight. Again, not a day trade. And again, we don't have to capture all the moves. Here's a student. He says, I've been a student of yours for four months now, and yesterday I officially became a slob. Right? Again, that's a term of endearment. But he bought the 95 strike price puts at 14 cents, and he set a sell order at 56 cents. He basically put a target of four times what he paid. He says he ran out to do some errands and get ready for the business webinar at noon, peeked at his trading account, and his order had been filled in less than two and a half hours. He says it went on to 90 cents and it closed at 66 cents. But he's a happy camper. He left money on the table. That's okay. We don't have to get it all to make a lot of money. Still yet again, another Schlumberger move. You see the pattern here, Schlumberger repeats. And, and someone might be saying, hey, but that's, that's still a couple years ago. Well, we just keep, we keep going back to the well on Schlumberger. Subject, my newest best buddy. Again, this is an email from a student. This is an unedited email. I want to let you know that one of your students rang the bell with a really nice gain with SLB. Felt some shivers of greed hitting me. Right? But felt making a double was enough to put a smile on my face heading into the weekend. Now, again, this is unedited. He says he bought the SLB 9695 strangle. Let me tell you something. A rule, a rule is the put is always the lower strike price. The call is always the higher strike price. That's a rule. He said around 1 o'clock yesterday. Now, this student, I believe, is on the West Coast, and this was right near the close. He purchased the calls for 50 cents, and he purchased the puts for 58 cents. That is, he paid a dollar eight for the pair. Right? He sold the calls for 310 this morning. He paid a dollar eight for the pair, sold the calls for 310. It doesn't matter if the puts expires worthless. That's, that's the strategy. We buy both a call and put, hoping for a big move one way or another. Another email from a student, Slob Trader, I'd like to thank you for teaching me how to trade SLB. I've been trading for almost two months with success. I'm up over $15,000. I basically trade with strangles, and I'm amazed how consistent it works. Right? Waits for the price to be between two strike prices. That's one of our rules. It says, are there any other securities that trade similar to SLB, or is this the only one? First of all, there are, there are other ones. But if you've made 15000 in two months, I, I think you would probably just want to consider yourself a slob and just continue trading just this one stock. So more current example, FOMC day. This is that event. Went from $0.06 cents in the morning to $0.72. Cents. All right, that's uh, quick mathematics, 12 times in price in one day. Here's Schlumberger. If, if this is even faster move. Went from two cents to a dollar in less than an hour. Here's a more recent move from four cents. The low of the day was four cents to a dollar thirty-eight high. This is from just a couple of months ago. But if that's not current enough, how about yesterday? Right? Is yesterday current? This is Schlumberger, the eighty-four call. Right? And let me tell you something. I would have rather bought this at the open at 41 cents than the previous day's close at 23. That's okay. 41 cents, it made a high of $1.22. Quick mathematics, like a penny away from a triple. And, and again, the, the previous close, well, close from one day to the next day is 295% gain. Again, this was yesterday. This stuff repeats. Right? If I do this presentation, a month from now, two months from now, a year from now, two years from now, I'm going to be able to pull up current Schlumberger examples because this stock has the math, right? And it's just, if you understand the math, you can take advantage of these situations. Now, this chart, this is, this, again, this is a chart from years ago. This is showing, this is Apple. Happen there. Give me one second. Let's 
second night. Put the wrong button somehow. Here, here we go. Here's Apple. This is Monday. This is Tuesday. This is Wednesday. This is Thursday. It made a low of 17 cents, but for three and a half days, you could have bought it for under 50 cents. It then spiked, made a high of seven and a half, but you could have sold it, right, for 12 times your money. Some setups will give us numerous entry opportunities. Some setups, right, give us less. Over time, right, you will be able to recognize both of them. Now, we have lots of setups. This is a 727 newsletter. This is not a couple of months ago, July. This is a few years ago. I talked about buying long-term Apple call options. I focus on short-term options, but occasionally I will write about a long-term option. Now, I, in my newsletter, I said to buy, I don't care how far off in the future you go. I, don't, I didn't care. I wrote, buy however far off you want to go, but buy the option right around three bucks. Right? So here's an option. 81 days before it expired, it went from $2.70 to $4 in one day. 109 days before expiration, but in one day it moved from $3 to $4. Now, I'm the king of short-term gains, but I'm not having you buy an option with 80 or 100 days to expiration to sell it in one day. I'm having you to buy it to hold it, right? Because that option went from $3 to $25.70. Took three weeks. That's a pretty big gain. $300 a contract to $2,570 a contract. A guy can, a guy can, that can save up some serious money doing this. All right, again, something more current. I like the Baidu 160. This is from my newsletter. This is a quote from my newsletter. If you read my July 9th, 2016 newsletter, you would have read that I like the Baidu 165 and 167 and a half call options. These options can move well over a thousand percent. Having said that, please don't risk money based on how much you can make. Risk money on how much you can lose. Right? Trying to bring you down to earth a bit. These options are inexpensive enough that smaller accounts can participate. And in fact, if it does hit, they will no longer be smaller accounts. Again, and here's what those two options did that very next week. Right? We can see a thousand percent move on the uh, 167 and a half and a, and a move probably about seven, 700 or so percent on the, on the 165. Again, written ahead of time in the newsletter, and these are pretty straight gains. There's not, there's not a big jagged pullback where you'd get stopped out. I like this trade. And you might say, well, great, that's July. You got anything more current? How about these from yesterday, right? Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG. The 405 call, right? It, it moved just under five-fold. 407 and a half call, call, it moved roughly fivefold, and the 410 call moved a little more than sevenfold in price, right, from the open to the high. Now you say, okay, well, this is great. You're showing us a trade that took place yesterday. It doesn't mean anything if I show you after the fact, if I didn't show you or tell you beforehand. So let me give you a quote from the last week's newsletter talking about Chipotle Mexican Grill. Remember, I talked about the plus five, or, or top five plus or minus, and I said I had four stocks picked in it. This is what I wrote just this past Saturday on CMG. I said, look at the CMG chart. It's streaking lower. It may retest its mid-September low. I would hope that it then would reverse course and head higher. If you look at the chart, it moved lower Monday, right? And then moved a little bit lower Tuesday. It's kind of a retest of the low, and then it bounced higher. So if this move does happen, it could occur when options cost the least, right? 
we buy weekly options because they don't cost a lot of money. They have a lot of leverage. I said it could, that CMG could cross a lot of strike prices. This could move, can cause out of the money options to move in the money. These moves can generate gains in excess of 500 or even 1,000 percent. You know, I'm, I'm sorry that the examples I show you from yesterday only moved up 500 to 700 percent. I guess I'm lousy at picking stocks. But am I? I I've, I've written a book. I filmed a video. Newsletter now. In, a, in two weeks, it'll be five years. Um, again, I do the math. I whittle that list even smaller down, find the top five plus or minus setups for the week. I review the previous week's, week's picks, and I educate. So having said that, I'm going to give you an opportunity to become one of my students, allow you to get my books and videos, allow you to get my newsletter, allow me to educate you, and I will give you a bonus video in the process. Now the reasons to join the Pulse system, to join my group of students, are the same reasons to trade options. Right? How much do you use and how much could you lose? And, and I say, how much do you use? My newsletter is $97 a quarter. In five years, I have never raised the price. In five years, I've never offered a discount. And I'm not offering a discount tonight. It's 97 bucks. How much could you lose? Well, you would think you could lose 97 bucks, But you can't lose anything, right? Because we have a full money-back guarantee. So Becky or Stephen, if 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 anyone um, of you wouldn't mind putting the link in so they can go, let me tell you. Just let me finish up real quick, and then I will get to the questions and answers. I've taught a number of students for a number of years. I I created a course for homeschoolers twelve years ago, and I've got a, a number of homeschoolers that have since graduated college with economics degrees, finance degrees, have gone on to become stockbrokers or, or work at hedge funds or make a living trading for, them, you know, for themselves. And I've helped a number of people either quit their jobs or replace their income when they've lost their jobs. And I have found that you need one thing, right, one set of skills to be successful. You have to be decisive. You have to be able to take action, right? And you have to be able to pull the trigger, but we don't want you just willy-nilly doing something. That's why we want you to paper trade and practice. We want you to understand what the risk is and understand what the potential is, and then you take a calculated risk. So the reality is I like to consider my newsletter as a test to see if you can be a good trader because if you can't decide to buy my newsletter, right, to become my student, maybe you don't have what it takes to become successful in trading. And I, I'm not saying this for any other reason except one. It's the calculated risk aspect. And it's not because I'm looking for options that are a dime, a nickel, right, 10, 20 cents, or even a dollar. It's because my newsletter comes with a full money back guarantee. If you do not double your money 20 times in 20 days, I'll give you your money back, even if you don't try. Now, let me qualify what this says. I'm not saying you're going to take $100 and turn it into $200 and turn it into $400 and turn it into $800 and turn it into $1,600 and $3,200 and so on and so on and so on. I'm going to say if you can't buy an option and double your money, whether you paid eight cents for the option or eighty cents for the option, if you can't do that twenty times in twenty days, right? Because there's that many opportunities, and I like to think that my system will teach you to understand and exploit those opportunities. If you can't do it, even because you feel that you can't pull the trigger, I'll give you your money back, no questions asked. Right? And so. Again, here, here's the link. I'm going to now take some time and answer some questions here. So give me a second because you guys have been sending questions in while I've been talking, so I'm going to scroll back a little bit. I might not answer all the questions. I apologize for that. I'm 
number number of people asking uh, questions on the getting onto the webinar, so I'm going to ignore those. There's a guy asked, "Do you have current results of your trades?" How, you know, the CMG is pretty current here, being that it was yesterday. The Schlumberger was yesterday. And a guy asked, "Am I discussing vertical or diagonal spreads?" These are not spreads at all. These are straight call puts, call purchases, or put purchases, or the combination of buying both of them at the same time. Are these based on earnings reports? No, we don't. We trade earnings after the earnings release. How much does a stock have to move to get a 300% return? That's a great question. All right, I'm going to tell you that you're going to find some SPY, spider options, tomorrow that are going to move 300% and spider's going to move a dollar or so. How's that? It, it, it's all in the math. Different stocks are a different amount. It's a function of how far the strike prices are apart from each other right, and how far the stock is from the strike price before the move takes place. button here. Bear with me a second. Said, are the majority of the trades on expiration Friday for weekly options or do you capture majority of the moves during the week? I, I probably trade a lot more on Fridays than I do the other days of the week. Um, and that's partly because options are very inexpensive on Friday, and I can find options that are you know under a dime a piece that can move to fifty cents a piece. How much cash did you risk in that Lowe's trade? Again, I actually bought contracts from a dollar seven to a dollar ten. You go look, go look at the, go look at the Lowe's sixty nine dollar call, the October twenty eighth expiration. Yesterday, or, or yesterday morning, you'll see 135 trades, 135 contracts take place right around uh, I think 10:30, give or take, in the morning, and then you'll see a, a spike, a one-block spike of at, between one a dollar 45 and a dollar 48 or so. That was me exiting most of mine at a dollar 47. So. Was that Lowe's trade a weekly option play? I actually bought next week's expiration, right? And a and little bit reason I, my wife actually had surgery here a week ago, so I'm kind of being Dr. Mom here. Do you use Bollinger Bands? I absolutely use Bollinger Bands. I use Bollinger Bands differently than John Bollinger used them. Um, and I, I know this because in 2000, I was an invited speaker at Omega World, and I followed John Bollinger. <laughs> and um, the fire marshal was kicking people out of the room for, for him, and then he undid his computer, and, and I undid mine, and people were leaving. He said, don't worry, kid. They'll come back. So I think John Bollinger is a super nice guy, but I use his, his indicator different than he does. He said, how about losing trades? Again, if I buy a call and put, I'm prepared to lose on one or the other because I'll make more on, on the one. Someone said, these are way out of the money options. That's a general rule. We look to buy one strike price out. Right? We have certain situations where we'll buy more than one strike price out. Last is this being recorded? I, under, I believe it's being recorded. Uh, a couple people are commenting. There's some frequent breakups. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, uh, in the recording. Someone said asked about Netflix. Uh, the Netflix certainly had a big move because of its earnings, but if you look at what the calls did after the actual release, they were a great trade as well. All right.
Someone said this is a recording, it's not live. No, this is this is live. It's gonna be recorded. But this is actually me here. Someone says I've seen this recording before. No, you've seen some of this PowerPoint before, but I update the slides and this is absolutely live. All right, someone said, what is the general math? The general math is that options are underpriced. <laughs> if you, or, or we, we teach you in the material how to recognize an undervalued option. Here's, here's the secret, everybody. Pay attention. There's not a slide for this. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to answer it in your mind yourself. What is the smallest measurement of time? All right, I'm going to take a drink of water while you answer this to yourself. What's the smallest measurement of time? Some people will say the millisecond. Some people say a nanosecond. Well, as far as the option pricing model that won a Nobel Prize for economics, it's a day. The price of an option is based on the change of stock from one day to the next. When you get a big tail up or the tail down, you know, if you get a doji, right, or, or or you get the stock closing the same one day that it did the day before, options are going to price, options are priced that the stock's not moving much. But if the stock makes a big low or a big high, you can harvest that. That's, that's the math. That's the secret sauce. Again, we talk about in the book how to find this stuff. In the newsletter, understand it's a little tough on a Saturday to tell you what the stock's going to be on a Friday and what to trade it. So we give you a series of rules. This is a very rule-based system. Right? Someone says, how do you get the videos in the book? If you sign up, we give you the book and video as part of your subscription. So um, having said that, they told me I had about an hour to talk, and I'm right around that hour. Got someone here who said, I traded the low trade with him yesterday. I can vouch for the trade. Made 33% with 10 contracts. Do the math. All right. He said, are you going to buy options tomorrow that expire tomorrow? I, I will. I will trade options tomorrow that expire tomorrow. But I might also trade options tomorrow that are expiring, you know, in January 2017. I look for underpriced options. That's, that's the basic premise here. Someone says, do you use bull put spread or bear call spreads? No, I simply buy calls or buy puts or buy them both. There's no spread involved in here at all. Someone said, do you recommend your system for a beginning option trader? Absolutely. Again, this is a one-room schoolhouse. I have some students that have never traded an option before, don't understand it. I've got to get you up to speed. But if you if you want to be a professional trader, right, if you're a newbie or... or, or you know, you're a stockbroker. I think I can teach you. All right. Steve, are you there? I am here. All right. I I I hope I didn't ramble. I tried to tried to talk really fast. Maybe I should have looked at the questions where they're coming in to try and work them into my presentation. Again, you know, we've known each other for a long time. And um, I really appreciate what you do and your effort to, to teach your students. And I know that you know that's my belief structure myself. I, I don't consider somebody a subscriber, right? I, I, this is not a self-published newsletter. I have a big-time publisher back in New York. He might think of you as, you know, the people as subscribers. I think of them as students. And, and I, I'm here to help as best I can. And if someone's, if someone's willing to give me the 20 days, I, I, th I think they'll stick around with me for years and years. That's that's my belief. You know that to be true, and I, I know that's your business model yep. as well. You're, you're in it for the long haul. So, yep. So everybody, take a look at the information. Um, this is something that is very well organized and we very well put together, so that you're not out there flailing around. You've got a uh, a definite game plan with uh, objectives to it. So. 
Chris, once again, you give very good information. And we yeah, I just that. want to say in the in the videos I make, you know, it's quite often they're you know similar to this, maybe a PowerPoint movie, but I'm not so rushed. I take my time, and and uh, and again, you know, I I I've been writing for decades, and I I think I'm pretty good at it. And um, again, if you've never traded an option, you know, I'll teach you how to trade them right. And in, and I'm going to tell you something. If if someone's out there doing a bull call spread or a bull put spread, they're hoping the option they that the, when someone does a bull put spread, they're hoping the option they sell doesn't skyrocket in price against them. At a minimum, if someone's a a bull put uh, spread trader, they need to study my material so they can avoid selling bull put spreads on the wrong stocks. Because it's it's all about the math, baby. So, um, Stephen, again, thank you, everybody. I, I appreciate the opportunity. I, I look forward to uh, possibly seeing you sometime in the future. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Again, everybody, look at this information. It is very well put together, and uh, Chris has been around for, as he said, decades. So it's. It's something that is working. With that, Chris, thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. We'll see you in the chat rooms.